Sarah Coleman is a citizenship coordinator at Royton and Crompton School in Oldham. She's about to use Comic Relief Red Nose Day resources to teach a lesson to her Year 7 class. On his way to visit her is Jeremy Haywood, an ex-teacher who now trains budding citizenship teachers at the Institute of Education in London. Right in Crompton embraced citizenship a long time ago. It wasn't just over the last five or six years. It's instilled into the pupils that they should behave as responsible citizens. Um, and it's only since I've come really that I've actually managed to put that into the curriculum. Jeremy's going to observe the lesson and then discuss with Sarah how they felt it went. Hopefully we'll see today uh, exactly a school like this, someone who's trained in citizenship, has now established a department, has got a, a team of people uh, that are trained and enthusiastic and hopefully it's made a big impact in the school. In the lesson today um, I'm actually focusing on what makes pupils happy. I'm going to ask the pupils to think about what makes them happy, what makes other people happy who they don't know and then also I'm going to ask them to think about wants and needs. And then to also understand that helping others be happy makes you happy. The subject of happiness is at the core of Comic Relief's commitment to citizenship education. They produced a range of lesson ideas and visual resources to be used as a teaching aid in conjunction with Red Nose Day 2007. Well the theme of Red Nose Day 2007 is the big one and as part of that we want young people in the UK to think about the big question and the big question is what makes you happy. So we've created a whole set of resources that we hope are suitable for every single environment within the school. The first set of activities concentrates on uh, talking about what young people need to be happy. The second set of activities focuses on the reasons why young people all over the world may not have all the things that they need to be happy. The third set of activities sort of asks a bit of a rhetorical question, um, which we thought was great for Key Stage 3, uh, which is how come school can make you happy. Right, as a group now, what I would like you to do is discuss what you think makes the person in the picture happy. Are his kids, see his kids, watch your pops, let's see. I think with, with pupils it is sometimes difficult to get them to, to think or to even empathise with people who they don't know, who's not personally close to them. I think that will make somebody happy. So I think in that respect, that's where your resources need to be, something visual that they can look at and maybe something that they can read about this person. And if it's somebody of their own age group, it's even better. So Christmas goodies. If citizenship's done well, it should be uh, taught through a lot of discussion. There should be a factual basis, but it should be an opportunity for students to develop their own opinions and to discuss them in a calm and rational way uh, with other students as well. So I think less traditional methods of teaching uh, are probably uh, more suited. What else? What other things did we write down that was similar, Amy? Um, having friends. Having friendships, yeah. Okay. So is there anything else that you picked up on? A doll. A doll. You're looking for the opportunity for students to participate and change something. And this is very different from most teaching. Most teaching you learn about the world as a static object and you just learn you know, about different aspects of it and how they work. This interview, you actually have a chance to interact with it and see yourself as part of that picture in the world. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you a very short DVD and it's a clip of a young girl who lives in Africa and she's just going to talk a bit about the things that make her happy. And while you're watching it, what I would like you to do is just think about if there's anything that you notice that she says that you would like to do that would make you happy. My name is Sagari. I am 10 years old. I used to live on the streets and beg. I couldn't go home because my mum didn't have a job, so we had no money and no food. And I think during the lesson today when I'm talking about things that they want, um, in the actual DVD, the young girl's saying she wants to go travelling and she wants to go to America and South Africa and places like that. And that's something that our children often want to do. So I think it's about relating um, to the children just because they're not living around the corner or opposite them on the same street. It doesn't mean that they're not like that person. My dream is to go on a plane. I visit 
we'd want to touch obviously themes about wants and needs. Uh, the fact that without certain needs fulfilled, it's very hard to, to live a fulfilled, happy life. So that needs are very important. Uh, and perhaps to point that, although we take it for granted in this country, there's many places in the world where young people's needs aren't fulfilled. I think it's, it's about encouraging empathy and through the DVD we can actually, actually do that and try and make it more relevant to them. Once Sarah's shown the students the DVD, she develops the theme of wants and needs using a card sort. What I would like you to do is in your pair, I would like you to sort the cards into wants and needs. And I'm going to give you about five minutes to do that, please. In good citizenship teaching this year, I should try and do sort of pair discussion, group discussion, building up to whole class discussion. Lots of ways to make people, pupils feel confident about giving their opinion in school. <laughs> Okay. And any you weren't sure about? You explain to me why you think that should, that's a, a want. Because you, you can live without like going to church, so you don't actually need it. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a really encouraging type of subject and a very positive type of subject because, you know, somebody can't fail at being a citizen, hopefully. Um, and it's something that all children can get involved with. Um, yeah, there was education. And what did you put that in then? Is there any that you're not sure about which column they went in? Um, to get pupils switched on, to see that these are important issues, they're issues that do affect them, but also that the way that they live their lives impacts on other people. I think that that's a real challenge. Sarah's also given the class blank cards to get the children to think about their own individual perspective. The last thing that I'm going to ask you to do is, I'm going to give each pair a set of questions and I want you and your pair to interview each other about some of the things that you've just done and then I'm going to ask everyone to just feed back what their answers were. Okay. TV. Well, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I think that, um, what if you didn't have a mobile phone? I wouldn't be able to In terms of their, their thinking, their moral development, their social development, uh, abstract concepts about society are starting to, to be formed in more concrete terms. Uh, but you're starting to see that progress through Key Stage 3 of perhaps seeing the world uh, more coherently from other people's perspectives as well. So for your homework, what you're going to do is you're going to teach your parents a thing or two. So good teaching should start to introduce those, but ideally introduce it from a way that relates to people's lives. It starts from their experience uh, initially and then draws outwards. As the children head home, Jeremy sits down with Sarah to talk through the lesson. In classes where you're asking pupils to have quite open discussions, mm. they need to feel that what they say is going to be valued by the teacher. Mm. And also that if they say something, other pupils sort of won't laugh or, or take the mickey out of it as well. But what I thought stood out for me as one of the features of the lesson is the fact that the students did feel quite psychologically safe in the room. They were all happy to answer questions, to speak in front of others. And I think that's testament to your teaching. Mm. Yeah, it's something that we... Uh, and I can see it's little things that you do when you go around to the groups, often you kneel down so that you're on their level, you make good eye contact, you're smiling, you're being friendly with them as well. Uh, well, I'm going to sort of talk over a few points, okay. and, and none of them are, are critical at all, it's just, yeah. just ways of sort of throwing ideas around yeah. about. Uh, perhaps we'll start with the video. Yeah. It, it obviously did make quite a bit of an emotional impact. Mm. Yeah. No money and no food. They were sort of uh, critically involved in the watching, which mm. I thought was good. But I thought it may have been better maybe to sort of set up a little about what country they're right. from and, and perhaps compare average yeah. wealth and, and some things to like that. To set it into context a bit more in that way, yeah. yeah. So it did feel as if it was just a bit of a, a jolt, isn't it, from suddenly yeah. from... what makes you happy and then, yeah, and to, to watch mean, this, yeah. 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 One thing I'd be slightly wary about, and again, mm. in the use of the video, yeah. uh, which I think it needed a, perhaps a bit more priming, is that uh, the stereotyping of everyone from Africa yeah. isn't having their needs yeah. met. And yeah. uh, is, is having a very hard time. And mm. I think it's uh, at year seven, it, it's part of perhaps a simple world view, but it's about that age that needs to be unpacked yeah. and go beyond the, uh, the stereotype. Um, what was one of the things that Sagari said that she did in the morning? What time did she get up, Callum? She got up at five and sweeps and washed the plate. Yes, so she swept up at five o'clock in the morning. Just in terms of uh, one or two of the activities, yeah. you did an activity where they, they started off looking at what would make them happy. Yeah. Then you had different photos yeah. 
that they then looked at. Just another way that could be developed, it was quite nice if they'd been looking at the same picture same to then thing. share the same ideas and you can build a, perhaps a more complex picture. It, it might have been worthwhile uh, adding a, a couple of areas of complexity in terms of needs. Right. We gave them categories like we thought about needs in terms of your survival needs, but mm -hmm. what do you need to also develop your full potential in life? Yeah. And I think that would have clarified a few issues like education. Some groups thought, of, well, I could literally yeah. live without That's education, it, yeah. so in that sense it's not a need, whereas I think if we characterise it as a developmental need, I think it definitely yeah. is. How did you think the card sort went when they had to put them into different piles? I think they enjoyed that, and I think they also enjoyed creating their own, because some of them were drawing chocolate bars and sweets. And it helps those people who don't just like sort of reading, sort of yeah. kinesthetic learners as yeah. well, so I'm a great fan of card sorts there. Mm. I think Sometimes, some groups will do sorts very quickly. It'll take other groups will discuss for ages. Yeah. Uh, so it's always good to have extension activities up your sleeve, and I, I really like that one yeah. of having blanks yeah. uh, as well. I think that worked, and most groups engage with that. Yeah. Uh, and a good activity, again, if you were going to do this lesson or a similar one, mm -hmm. uh, to establish this idea of needs and wants yeah. is to ask them to imagine uh, some sort of disease had broken out in the school there and then that day right. and they've been told that they're not allowed out of this classroom right. possibly for three four days and then you get them to think about what would they need right. and then think about what they want yeah. on top of that it's a nice way of doing needs and wants yeah. as well yeah. there's also an issue that you, know, you could have all of your needs met in life and still, and still not, not be, be happy. happy. Yeah, you're right, that yeah. Often what actually does make us happy sometimes is the wants, yeah. uh, which sort of went against the, the theme of the lesson, which yeah. is trying to say we need to get our needs sorted first. There's right. lots of issues to do with mental illness yeah. and, and things like that, depression, right. that might make people yeah. unhappy. I think in the sequence of lessons, the way I would do it is um, the next lesson after this is what makes um, people unhappy. So I think that would be a good opportunity to address the fact that even though somebody has all their needs, they can still maybe not be happy. I thought the advice from Jeremy was really, really useful. And, in, and just being aware of there might be some children in there that necessarily can't, you know, they can't necessarily think of something that makes them happy straight away. And also maybe using different techniques in the lesson to encourage more participation amongst the pupils so that it's not just the quickest answer first. I think she, she achieved quite a lot in, in a fairly short space of time. Uh, I think I like the way she'd used the needs and wants cards. I think that, that was a really good main activity and uh, the, the pupils grasped that quite well. In terms of the resources, I think the resources worked very well and um, Jeremy was supportive of, of a lot of the things that we did use in the lesson. She used the video. I think perhaps a bit more could have been done with that. I mean, you, you probably could spend a good sort of 20 minutes on that just by doing some work beforehand and perhaps a bit more Q&A after as well. It was just about tweaking different activities and providing extension work for pupils that maybe have finished first. So I found the advice and the information really, really useful. None of the activities lasted too long. I thought for a year seven you can't keep the focus on one thing going for too long and I thought she changed it nicely. The pacing was good, uh, the timing was right and she had a, a nice cleaner at the end.